Okay, Dexter, so my first question is, why do we have this orange and white wire with these wire nuts? Is that for some future stuff or something we got rid of? So that's actually has 120 volts to it because originally, well, well, it's wire nutted, so you'll be safe. But originally we had a power supply that ran off AC, but instead we switched over to one that runs on the, uh, the battery voltage. So this box right here converts from, you know, whatever your 46 to 60 volts um, coming from the batteries to the, a nice solid 24 volts that powers the, the brain box and the whole control panel. So then is this one here the brain box? Yeah, that's the brain box. You program it right there through that. That's through that, 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 Ethernet cap, port. that Ethernet port. Connects right up to the laptop. Is this one here also for, what is that port for? So that is, um, it says on there RS-232. So it's like an expansion. So you can get like a, um, a touch screen display instead of all the buttons. And I that's see. the port you expand through. That's where you go to your So display. it's like a, um, like a serial port. And then these two with all the wires are here, these, these are modules? Yeah, so these all just, um, there's little tabs that lock them together and you unslide them and they all, they all unstack. So all you have to buy is that main brain and then you can buy the different expansion modules and, and you can see there's different, uh, different types of modules for different kinds of inputs. So like these two right here are identical, but I just added those because those are uh, 120 volt inputs so instead of having these two relays right here that detect um, when the power is coming from the generator, it'll go straight into here and then the system can look at them a lot better than these two relays can. And if there's any sort of um, odd input signal, any uh, fluctuation, something drops out, then it can, it can put the system into like an error mode and, and not it can it can catch its own problems is essentially Versus what that one does of these, like locking out or locking in or yeah exactly so instead of relying on a mechanical relay to stay closed and then you know what happens if the relay fails so it always has a brain monitoring it versus when these are working there's no brain here to work. so so what i did here is i took the 240 volts off the back of the panel meter yeah and it's just closing a switch that runs 24 volts and then comes into here on a 24 volt input but you lose a lot of sensing so if we were to lose just one leg off that generator right only one of these relays would open and the PLC wouldn't know that you lost a leg and think the whole generator shut off. I see. That makes sense. Um, and then I added another input and output module just because these ones are all pretty full. So I don't know what our, our exact expansion game plan is, but I added those just because we're, we're in the process of, of adding some upgrades. So in, in this big piece right here. Yeah. That's our switch that lets all the power go take for the generator to take over the power off the batteries. Right, so what that does is that's the main power coming in from the generator. So when we want to shut the generator off, that opens up and allows the generator to cool down um, before it, it shuts off the motor. And it also allows it to warm up uh, without a load before it, um, it, it starts loading down a, a cold generator. And the only generator. one that's labeled here, that's a pretty important one, huh? That, that allows pan. us to be able to walk in here and still breathe. Well, yeah, that that's about... So the only other relays really are these four. We have the one that's the accessory power for the generator, the glow plugs, and then the crank signal. And then all this relay does is control this relay. But I actually found the other day online that we can get this relay in 24 volts DC and eliminate this one and just control it right off the PLC. Oh, very nice. And then if this is DC, because right now this is a powered off 24 volts AC, which comes from this transformer up here, well, what happens is if the power goes out, we no longer have enough voltage or, or uh, anything to control that contactor. So like the other night when the power went out at two in the morning and we had to come out here, you remember I was pushing yeah. that in with my finger? That's because I was trying to get power to charge the batteries. Right, and this is this little tiny one back here is a pretty important part, isn't it? Those are the fuses off the power supply. Those protect the main the main PLC brain. And did we have one of those blow out? Um, when we had, so we had a couple of things happen. When we had the the AC power supply, we also had a uh, cheapo version of that that oh, one right, right there. Right. And when the batteries got up around 60 volts, it didn't like it anymore, and the the power supply had blown up. And then that took out the the main brain and two expansion modules at the same time. 
And what's this, what's this big fancy piece with all the heat sinks on it? So that's actually, uh, so we could keep the spa hot with extra power. So actually, if you come over here, I'll show you on this, um, on this controller. If we go into the menu, and all of these have the same password, uh, it's 141. And you actually can't change that. But if you look in here, it says aux mode, and it says diversion solid state. So right now the output's off, but what this is doing is, this is watching the battery voltage and how much power is coming in from the solar panels. And it sends a signal down through the, through the wireway. And that comes in on this silver wire right here. So a couple of things happen. That signal is opening and closing this really quickly. Um, so if, if you were to imagine, I'll draw it out, right? You have your sine wave and it looks like this, right? So what that signal is, is how big this is right here, that the amount of time that that's on versus if it were to just be, you know, if it were to come back down here and then be spread out, uh, come back up here. This allows varying amounts of power to go through. So we can vary and, and have a percentage of the time that that's on. And that allows us to only uh, allow a couple of watts to go to the spa or full wattage, depending on how wide this part of that waveform is. And, and that's how long the, the solid state relay is on for. I see, so Reader's Digest version is, um, when I, when I have like a 300 mile day on the motorcycle like today, this is why I can come home to 108 degrees exactly. spa and, and enjoy myself. And actually we have these two wires right here that go up to these relays and pretty much what this relay right here does is these two wires on the bottom right here are connected to that solid state relay. But then we have a jumper across the other side. So all this relay does is it either goes through the solid state relay or uh, through the jumper. And when it's through the jumper, it's turning it on 100% of the time. So you get 100% of the power going through. Right. And at the same time that this relay goes to the jumper, this relay right here switches from taking power from the inverter off the batteries, like when you're, right. you're trying to send that extra, to then it closes directly onto the generator. So here in the generator panel, we have a 20 amp breaker right here, and that's feeding into half of this relay, the, the lower contacts, the normally open contacts, and then it's sending the full 30 amps that the spa will draw directly off the generator. And that's right. what the fast heat is, is it closes both of these relays at the same time, to try and get as much power as is available into that into that spa. So then all that helps optimize being able to have a 240 volt spa uh, when you're 100% off the grid. That's correct. So this is what helps us be off the grid and maintain our batteries and we, we have extra power and then it just keeps the spa hot all the time. That's correct. I like that problem. <laughs> Especially after a 300 mile day on the motorcycle, That's right? right. So one other thing you see these black and orange wires right here yeah that's not halloween is it it's not halloween no but uh, those go into the plc and the cool part about this plc is it can send signals really fast so while this is turning on and off really quick from that controller right. this is seeing that so the when this is on the diversion mode it's sucking its power off of that black inverter over there right, it's not on right. the blue inverter that's right, so, so that's why when I come in here, this is running during the day. see that battery voltage like bouncing all over the place really fast. That's because this is turning on and off power off that inverter. Right. Now we have that on a separate inverter because we don't want any of that interference from turning off and on coming right. off our main inverter. And we also don't want to put a 30 amp load potentially on the blue inverter that's powering everything else on the ranch. We don't want to overload it. Right, the Smurf doesn't like that. So this PLC is tied in through these two relays, we actually have a Cat5 cable on the bottom of this inverter right here. And that's the cable that's that, this cable that's here, that right? one right there, yep. And that's the cable that allows the PLC panel to turn this one on and off. Now what we will be adding. Ooh, bad boys are working. Um, Smurf Swarm. Smurf Swarm. What we will be adding this weekend is I wanna get a Cat5 cable on this inverter and I also want to get onto this new, I got these two new modules that can detect 120 volts. So we can watch the output of this inverter. And if this inverter shuts down for some reason, we can turn it off through that Cat5 cable and turn it back on and try and reset it 
So when you hit your system reset, it'll reset the, the inverters and everything. Does that make the siren go off and all the lights flash inside here so we know something happened? So what will happen is if this shuts off just randomly out of nowhere for no reason, it can actually activate the siren and make, make lights flash. Well, we're actually not making lights flash right now, but uh, we could. A lot of people yeah. on the YouTube comments suggested adding a uh, outside a Out, horn and strobe. strobe light outside. Exactly. Yeah. We should take one of our DJ strobes and stick it up there. Well, the problem is that requires power. So whatever it is. Oh. So that was one of the conversations um, with the batteries is if we get a the lithium pack, we'll do the 100 amp hour pack for now. Well, later on, if we want to break it down into 24 volts, we can have that be the emergency power for this panel. So if we have any of those horn and strobe kind of things, it'll be powered off its own battery. Right. So if these... Well, these are all going to go, actually, the new battery pack will probably sit right here underneath and we'll probably won't have any of the bus bars because it's all so small, it, it most likely fits between these inverters. So we'll gain a lot of space here and a lot of space here. And then what I was thinking of, one of the issues I realized when we put the, the gutter in this room like this is now we have this transformer, which is going to step up 240 to 480 to run to the well. Well, we'll have all this space right here, and I can just continue the wire way up here across and drop down into that transformer and have disconnects on the wall and have it all professional and, and up to code. So that's, that's one of the future plans. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see more raw, uncut, unedited videos like this, leave a comment below. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day, and goodbye.